guys, Strimus Models here, back at you with another video. In today's episode, we're going to be going over my completed Extremis Models Voodoo Exo Car. Um, definitely one of the biggest scratch build projects I've ever had. Uh, a lot of time and effort went into this one. Uh, a lot of detail work. Um, probably the most detail work I've ever put in a car. Um, this one was a big Atlanticon project for this year. And uh, I just barely managed to get this one done like two or three nights before the show. So we were right down to the wire. I mean, right down to the wire on it. Um, but I managed, you know, we, we got it done, got it out the door, and uh, got it on the table with a lot of great builders. Um, again, I just want to thank everybody that came out to Atlanticon this year. Uh, it was good getting to see everybody again, getting to hang out with Brian and Fred getting to see Bob Downey again and uh, just a, a lot of really awesome awesome projects on the table and uh, I was extremely fortunate to be able to go down there and share the table with uh, with some of you guys uh, but yeah without further ado guys we're gonna get right on in the video all right guys so here it is our completed extremist models voodoo exo car uh, so first I want to start off by, by kind of giving you guys an example of where this car's inspiration came from. Uh, you know, this, this build kind of hits home for me. And the reason why, I, I'm not really sure how many of you guys know this, but I'm a very avid Forza player on Xbox. Uh, I've, you know, played pretty much, pretty much every Forza title that's ever came out. Um, all the way from the original Forza Motorsport all the way up to Horizon 5 now. And uh, in Forza Motorsport 7, we were introduced to a car called the Exomotive Exoset, which I have pictures of here on Google on another phone. Oops, I accidentally opened that site. But you kind of get an idea of where the car's inspiration came from in being an exoskeletal open wheeled kind of a track day car see they, they make them in off-road variants too and, and these guys will build you one of these street legal non-street legal uh, they use different engines um, I've seen these cars with like K-series Honda motors in them with Mazda Miata engines um, let's see there should be a picture of one in here. There it is. This is the one that's in the game. And as you can see, it is sporting an LS Corvette engine. And this is the one that, that I got the inspiration from in the game to, uh, to build my own sort of a open wheeled type car. And me being a big Ford guy, opted to go with a lot of Ford components on this car. And, and we'll get to that. So, I'll pull the roof off and kind of give you guys a rundown of some of the scratch work. Uh, the chassis is 100% scratch built out of styrene tube. It's all hand bent. Um, with styrene tube this size, you don't really need, or excuse me, styrene rod. With styrene rod this size, you don't really need to, to heat it up to get it to bend to whatever shape you need it to. I'll remove that out of the way before it gets broke. But it's all hand bent and locked in with CA glue and then I went in and, and sanded all the joints up to really clean up some of the what would be weld lines on a real car. And uh, you know I just I started the chassis and just kept on and on adding to it until I eventually got to a point where I needed to figure out what I wanted to do about a rear suspension. Well, a while back ago, I purchased a 99, uh, it's a Revell 99 SVT Cobra Mustang kit. And it was a parts kit, didn't have a body in it, it didn't have, you know, the hood, windows, anything like that. So it was more for parts. And one of the leftover parts was the independent rear suspension and differential subframe out of the back of the car. And I thought, you know what, that'll work. So that's what I used out back. There's some nice, I don't know how well you can see them up in there, but there's some nice middle springs up in there. Threw in some shocks. And uh, got some 
nice 3D printed rotors in here. Um, and that's pretty much all I did for the rear suspension. I didn't want to, you know, overdo it. Um, I even thought about doing like a four link style setup, but I've done that so many times now. And I wanted to do something different. So that's, that's what I did for the rear suspension. Now the front suspension was a little bit more complicated to figure out because I had to get the engine situated first where I needed it before I could go in and start adding, adding the upper and lower control arms, the strut braces and, and, you know, doing the, uh, steering stabilizer, stuff of that nature. Um, I needed to get the engine positioned, get the headers positioned where they were going to be so that I knew for certain that I wasn't going to have any clearance issues. And with these headers, uh, being designed the way they are, I was able to do so relatively easy. Um, so what I use for the front suspension under this car is leftover kit parts from the same Honda F1 car that I robbed the tires and wheels out of for my uh, previous XJR F100 build, uh, you know, the Lamar race truck. And then, you know, those are 1 20th scale. This is a 25th scale car. So what I ended up doing was I ended up nipping the ends off of the uh, control arms and getting them, you know, just the perfect lengths. And then I just glued them straight to the chassis and then finished everything out with, uh, with nice flanges and, and bolts kind of to do my own joints and stuff so that they'd look functional. And then uh, to top it off, I just finished it out with a uh, scratch-built steering stabilizer and you know stuff like that. Didn't want to overdo it, even though the whole car is kind of overdone. It, it, it's funny that I say that because the the night that I had the idea for this car, I told my buddies on the live stream that I'm usually uh, on every weekend. I told Fred, Brian, Miguel, and and Terry that you know I'll. I want to build an open wheeled race car and I don't want it to be complicated and I want it to look like something that you built in your garage for $2,000 and you go down and smoke a bunch of hypercars at the racetrack with it and then yeah this thing happens um, definitely uh, definitely the most extreme looking vehicle in the display case for sure in terms of uh, its focus I think um, among the other scratch build work uh, involved on the vehicle, I'll get out a, a pointer here. Uh, aside, you know, from the obvious chassis, uh, all of the aero kit is completely scratch built out of styrene, uh, out of styrene plastic card. Um, this is a two layer front splitter. It's got an upper and a lower layer. Um, and to get this splitter to go in easier than you know I would have would have previously been able to the inside of the splitter here is actually cut out to conform to the bottom of the chassis that way I knew when I got ready to install this splitter that it was going to go on straight and then figuring out how to brace this splitter kind of gave me fits in the beginning because obviously there's nothing in here to attach the struts that you would normally find on a uh, on a high downforce vehicle usually there's some kind of adjustable struts attached here here and you know also on the outsides too that would give it some support structure so I opted to just go ahead and make this a solid mount splitter using styrene rod through here that have bolts in them little bolt heads so this looks like it would all be removable and functional um, moving on to the sides, this is a single layer side skirt, uh, with a, you know, single front wicker and then dual, dual wickers at the back. Um, definitely one of the most aggressive looking side skirt I think I've ever made out of plastic card. Um, and I, I, I started out, you know, with just a single single you know winglet or you know wicker whatever you want to call it uh, I'd started out doing a single winglet and um, 
I thought that the gap between the outside of the of the skirt and the door bars, even though they're not actually doors, they don't they don't open. Um, I thought the gap was too big, so I just added a second taller winglet in there, and it it really worked out well. Uh, the wing is also scratch built out of styrene uh, styrene plastic card. It is hard mounted to the vehicle. Um, wouldn't be any adjustability on this. I didn't feel like adding any kind of struts or anything for adjustment. And then uh, to round out the uh, the arrow, I added this uh, this nice little uh, roof wing here. And then it's also got a matching wing on our removable roof panel. And that's that's how it looks with the uh, the roof installed to add to the roof detail I got a really nice photo etch tab kit from future attraction and I added these tabs along the uh, the perimeter of the of the roof to kind of add just to add a little bit more detail and uh, yeah that's, that's something I'm really happy with uh, the aero kit turned out great on this car. We're going to turn this thing about right there and we are going to dial in on this engine real quick and I'll give you guys kind of a rundown on what we did with that. So the engine is an Iceman Collections 5.2 liter Voodoo V8 that you would typically find in a brand new GT350 or GT350R Mustang. This is, uh, in real life, it's the flat plane crank uh, coyote based uh, engine. And uh, just another, you know, great engine. I love, uh, I love using these. And uh, I got to thinking right after I, uh, Right after I started this build and I started getting the aero kit sort of worked out, I was like, you know, having a track car like this would be cool. Would have plenty of 526 horsepower in a car that weighs 2,000 pounds is, is plenty. And then, you know, I got to thinking, well, I can't leave well enough alone. I, I, you know, I'm, I've never been one to not try to go over the top with something. And uh, I just couldn't keep the naturally aspirated intake set up on this on this build i've always been the type of guy that likes boost um as you guys know a lot of my builds are either twin turbo or supercharged or whatever you know not a lot of them are naturally aspirated and uh i got to thinking you know i would really like to see a whipple on this car i think it would really add to the appearance um, and besides, who doesn't like a, a Whipple supercharged Ford? So I got up with Miguel over at Hobby Works, and again, like in the last video, I'll leave, a, uh, I'll leave a link to his website and his Instagram in the description below. You guys go check him out if you guys are on the market for STL files. If there's something that Miguel can help you with, please feel free to, to shoot him a message over on Instagram, at Hobby Works, and uh, be sure to tell him that your boy extremist sent you but anyways I got up with him gave him the dimensions off the old intake and he printed me this really nice Whipple supercharger and uh, I got to thinking you know a, f a 526 horsepower go-kart would be fun but it would be nowhere near as much fun as a 1200 horsepower go-kart so there we have it. We've got a Whipple supercharged 5.2 liter V8 uh, for this build. It uses the uh, the manual trans out of the uh, resin kit, and then I topped off the uh, the exhaust with some really nice uh, some really nice headers from Ron Olson at Shapeways. Um, I had to use these headers because a regular set of headers. If you, if you guys can see this. The uh, the engine is tucked as far back against the firewall as I could get it. I mean, there's a little gap there, but it's it's about as close to the firewall as I could possibly get it because I wanted to keep this car really tight and uh, you know keep it kind of uh, 
kind of just a small package keep it real just a packed in type of vehicle and keeping the small size and small nature of the vehicle so I, I use these uh, these headers from Ron Olson. These are the only ones that I could find that would work, um, and I haven't yet figured out how to how to scratch built headers out of uh, out of soldering wire. It's something I, I may dabble into later on, but these just barely missed the firewall back here, and uh, they worked out just fine. So. For the radiator, I used one of the same resin twin fan radiator, electric radiators that I use on a lot of my other builds. And uh, I went in and wired everything up. As you can see, there's a harness here. Um, like the all the coils on the engine are wired. There's a dash wire back here that runs down. This The entire car is wired and plumbed. Um, let me see if I can, if I can show you guys. Back this camera back up a little bit. I don't typically like to move my camera around this much during the videos, but if you guys look along the passenger side floorboard, there are fuel lines on one side and computer lines on the other. And if you look underneath the dash there, I'm not sure you're going to be able to see that, but there are some uh, nice computers in there that I ordered from Shapeways as well. I think Ron Olson made the files for those also. And uh, the entire car is wired. The fuel system's completely plumbed. There's a fuel pump right down in there. Then you have your uh, your return, and then the line for your uh, for your uh, electronics inside the fuel cell, like your float. Um, Let's see here, what else? Oh, I used copper wire for the uh, for the brake lines. These are ran to a master cylinder and then they're teed off and ran to each caliper. So the car has uh, brake lines, front and rear. Look how short that drive shaft is. It's probably the shortest drive shaft I've ever put on any kit I've ever built, any car I've ever built. Um, so the interior, uh, I kept it kind of simple and, and race car-ish. I don't know, that's a new word, race car-ish. <laughs> so, um, like the EV100, I have a surplus of these, you know, Mustang kits laying around and just, uh, a stockpile of GT500 parts and stuff. So what I did was, is I cut the dash pad out of a uh, Revell 2010 GT500 kit and put a uh, piece of L-shaped uh, plastic card in there, like I did with the last dash or one of the last dashes I done, and just uh, threw on the leftover Honda F1 car gauge face and uh, added some really nice gauge decals in there, and then the uh, the center section in there of the dash I took an old license plate and repurposed it as a uh, well I'll get this camera focused there it goes I took an old license plate from another kit and repurposed it as a um, as a small computer screen and that's what this right here is I know it's kind of difficult to see because it, the interior is mostly black and it kind of just disappears in here and then I added some uh, some plastic card strips to the edge of it to create kind of a bezel to make it look like a like a small monitor screen and then just you know threw in some more gauge decals the seats are 3d printed seats from eBay I'm not really sure which ones these are. I know I've got a bunch of these left over also. The uh, the harnesses. God, I've been asked about the harnesses a lot. Um, these are a 3D, or not 3D printed. These are a photo etch multi-piece racing harness set that uh, I got from eBay. I bought, I think, maybe eight or nine sets. Ooh, excuse me. I bought probably eight or nine sets of these things. And uh, I'll, I'll be honest with you guys, they are complicated to build. Uh, 
does require a lot of bending um, once you get the first the first one out of the way the second third and fourth belts kind of get easier uh, you know just like anything you know repetition will will make stuff easier for you um, and then these are like I said these are chassis mounted seat belts as you can see they they pass through the uh, they pass through the holes in the back of the seat and they just attach straight to the to the chassis rail so one of the chassis rails back here I had to make sure when I was building the chassis for this car that I mocked it up with the seats so that I knew where to put this bar right here uh, height wise to make sure that the the seat belts would all line up correctly um, the tires and wheels on the uh, on this build are from an Aoshima 124th scale Nissan GTR kit. Now I had planned. Let me grab these other wheels that I was going to use, and I will give you guys the reason why I didn't use them. I have this set of wheels here. I've had these. For quite a while now these are really awesome looking tire and wheel combo um, these were printed again by Miguel over at Hobby Works they are an awesome tire and wheel they're really nice and wide you know just look like a real track style type of wheel the reason I did not settle on these if you can see this is a solid wheel wheel and tire combo listen to me I can't even talk this is a solid wheel and tire combo and uh i mean there's a demarcation line around the wheel you can see it through there um but there were two reasons why i didn't use this wheel and tire combo number one like i said it is a solid one piece tire and wheel and number two you see i painted the wheels red i did not feel like having to go around and uh score that seam line there and then have to mask everything off and then run the risk of while I was scoring it uh, or excuse me you know peeling out the uh, the seam lines I didn't feel like scoring the side of the sidewall and then having to fill it and sand it and then mask everything off so I figured why not just take this tire and wheel and use them on a build where I'm going to paint the tires and wheels black or excuse me the wheels black tires are black anyway Josh <laughs> I figured, you know, we'll save these for another build where the wheels will be black and uh I don't have to do any kind of uh any kind of seam line work or anything and run the risk of damaging these tires and wheels cuz these are really awesome and uh I will use these on another build. So, like I said, the kit that this came out of the kit that these tires and wheels came out of is the Aoshima 124th scale Nissan GTR. And uh, there is a little Chevy in this build. I know it's got a Ford engine. It's got a Ford rear end. Um, it's got a Ford, mostly Ford dash. There is a little Chevy in this build. And the little bit of Chevy that's in it is the wheel color. And the uh, the wheels have been painted with Gravity Colors uh, Chevrolet Red Hot, which you'd find on a, on a modern Camaro. Um, it's one of the most vibrant red colors that I have. I knew I wanted this car to stand out, and doing the red wheels, I think, was the right move. Um, one of the other things I was going to do for this car, which I actually ended up, I did do it, and then I decided that I didn't like it because I thought it was a little too much. All of these wing plates on the side skirts, the plates on the spoiler, the splitter up here, those were going to be finished in the exact same color as the car or the, excuse me, the wheels that are on the car. This wing back, winglet back here was going to be, or excuse me, fin was going to be done the same color. And the, uh, the fin on our removable roof panel was going to be done in the same. And I originally had it all painted and I just thought that it was so much red that it just took away from the overall appearance of the car. So I just painted it all back black and left the wheels. Um, and that's that's where we're at with uh, with the the wheels and wheel paint. The chassis of the car is finished in AK Interactive Extreme Metal. I think it's 669 titanium. It is, you know, a really nice color. Um, 
one of the darker metals. I wanted this to kind of look like an untreated chassis, but an untreated chassis that uh, had been kind of cleaned up a little bit and maybe coated with something to help keep it from, from rusting. Um, and it's got that really nice metalized look to it. Um, all of the other parts of the car, for example, um, you know, like the, the valve covers and the blower and some of the other components like the seat and dash, those are all finished in a Tamiya XF1 flat black. And then they've just been lightly uh, weathered with some Tamiya weathering powders to kind of bring out like some of the detail and stuff like the ribs on the on the blower are a little bit more prominent because they've been lightly weathered with Tamiya weathering powders. Um, so yeah, like I said in the intro, this was one of the big Atlantica on projects for this year. I'm really happy with how this car turned out. Um, it's been met with some really, uh, really good reception too. Um, people seem to like this build a lot. Uh, it harbored a lot of attention at the show. And uh, I had an absolute blast with this one. Not something I want to, not something I want to attempt again uh, anytime soon because there was a lot of detail work uh, tied up in this car, and uh, this build really did take away from some of the other stuff that I had on the bench and still have on the bench. But um, you know, maybe in the future I'll, I'll revisit this type of build again I would really like to try a mid-engine version of this at some point so maybe later on down the line we'll we'll get into that but uh I think that's pretty much gonna wrap it up for this video guys um, if you enjoyed the video please subscribe to the channel hit the little bell so you stay notified of all my new videos coming out please like comment and share and I look forward to seeing you guys in the next video take care Yeah. yeah.